Um, good morning and uh, welcome and sorry about the fact that uh, we start about a week late. Good. Um, let's just uh, start off with a few general things about the, the course. Uh, so this is uh, 612. It's a TIFT uh, specially designed course in the uh, spirit of this institute of uh, teaching uh, on uh, steel, science, and technology. Um, you don't need to purchase a textbook, but if you want to purchase a textbook, which covers a little bit more of the material, there is a book uh, that you can order from uh, this website here. Um, it costs about $50, I think, for students. Uh, and uh, it's a book that I wrote together with a colleague in the US called uh, John Spear at Colorado School of Mines, where they also do a lot of nice steel research. And it's a book, it's basically about um, physical metallurgy of steel products. Um, it's, um, it's a pretty useful book. It covers a lot of material. Uh, but um, you don't have to buy it. Uh, but there is a lot of material um, uh, that overlaps uh, with the book. So this is where you can get it. Um, and you can uh, order through internet uh, very easily. $50, as I said. Um, the, uh, just to uh, make sure uh, we meet at the right time, so we meet on Monday and on Wednesday, 11 to 12.15 in this, in this room uh, of the GIFB building. Um, now, very important for this uh, course, we use a rather special way of, um, of grading the course rather than having homeworks and um, midterms and final exams. We have a continuous uh, 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 evaluation of your progress. Um, so every Wednesday at the start of the class we have a 15 minute quiz, yes? The quiz is uh, always the same format. It's uh, it's 10 questions about the last two lectures, yes? And it's, it's basically a yes and no, or you don't have to write sentences, so it's, it's very, very quick to, um, to answer. So it's an alternative way of, of doing things, uh, so you don't have to uh, spend a lot of time um, studying. You just have to rehearse whatever we've seen. Um, whether you do well or not uh, doesn't depend on your skills in English because the answers you have to give are very simple, uh, either numbers or drawing arrows. or So um, your English skills um, uh, have no impact on, on your grades. And it also allows you to spread out the risk of, um, um, you know, um, doing... Um, not as well on exams and things like this, okay? Now, I understand you're uh, all graduate students, so some of you may have to go to conferences or be absent for uh, once, um, and you will, uh, you know, you may miss a test. So everybody has, uh, can miss one test, uh, no questions asked. If you miss two qu tests, it's, um, it's starting to be uh, uncomfortable and you cannot miss three tests. So if you miss three tests, you have a major problem. Okay, so that's really uh, reasonable, I think. Um, okay. I will also tell you, uh, now, of course, because the class is starting today, we will, we will not have a test on, on Wednesday. Just, you won't have enough material, so we'll We'll do it next Wednesday. We'll start next Wednesday, okay? 
and you should, uh, in total, you uh, uh, there are ten total of t about ten quizzes, maybe one or two more, but it's about ten quizzes. So you, in the end, you end up answering, um, you know, close to uh, you know, over a hundred questions uh, related to the course. So. Um, it's a very reasonable way of uh, evaluating you, okay? Uh, right. Uh, so before I, I go to, uh, the, uh, into the subject uh, itself, uh, we tape the course. Mm -hmm. So the tape, you, and after, after each lecture, um, within a few hours, the lectures should be available on the e-class site for you to watch, yes? So if, uh, this, uh, if you miss the class, uh, you know, the, the, you can watch it there, yeah? Um, so that's also to make it easier for you to, um, to cope with the, uh, with the English. Um, right, uh, and I think that's the, um, the most important one. Yes, uh, please um, have a look at the quality of the uh, um, video uh, if you could, uh, last year we had some problem with the sound being not uh, loud enough, right? So, and that was a bit of a problem for uh, the students um, looking at uh, the video on the uh, on the e-class uh, site. So, please uh, let us know if uh, if if there's a quality problem there. All right. So let's start about. Oh yeah. And then the other thing, uh, what is my aim in this? Um, course, uh, this is not a difficult course, okay? Uh, I've uh, gone out of my way to try to avoid mathematics, it's a, but you, you do, get, do get a lot of material and lots of information, yes? And it's, it's basically related to products, why they are the way they are in terms of uh, composition, why they are the way they are in terms of microstructure, um, and we'll see throughout the course how products are, steel products are made, yes? What is important, and hopefully you'll go home with a good feeling of what the physical metallurgy is of these products, yes? Um, without being a research level expert in any of the subject we touched on. It's a very, it's a technology oriented course. Hmm? Um, rather than a academic science focused course. And I, uh, this is a course that's very, um, I teach it um, frequently, not only at TIFT, but also outdoors to industry professionals. So it's, I try to make it as, as um, relevant to engineering practice as possible. Hmm? So that, uh, you know, if you uh, get a job in the steel industry or in related steel industry, you have a good feeling of you know, what the current um, level of technology is, what the types of steels are that people use, um, and, and what the, issue, the important issues are in terms of, uh, for instance, quality of the material. All right, so, um, so let's start. Um, the first couple of lectures are uh, very much um, things you some of you may be very familiar with, others may be less familiar with, so it's just to make sure everybody is at, is at the same level hmm, in terms of uh, understanding. So um, you're probably familiar, uh, because I think most of you are um, material scientists, with um, the so-called um, uh, tetrahedron of material science, where um, we have Basically, the um, uh, structure, structure properties relations uh, on uh, two of the uh, points of interest and the processes by, by which uh, ones you obtain the structure and then the, the performance of the material. So in terms of a, uh, uh, and then I've used some pictures here, uh, which are relevant to steel. So steel is, is as such not different from any other material um, that uh, you have a microstructure, you have some engineering 
uh, properties uh, such as strength, yes, um, which then have an impact on the product and the performance of this product, for instance, in the case of a car, yes. And, and, and these uh, microstructures, well, you obtain them by, by processing. Yeah? And the, the, the steel processing is, um, is one of the, uh, the things we'll be discussing in the course of this, um, this, um, these lectures. And, uh, so you can see here, um, this is a, uh, a forging. You can see the, the person standing here. So it's a huge forging. Um, uh, and, 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 and you know, that will be uh, having an impact on the microstructure, and we'll, we'll discuss these things. Now, in practice, in real engineering practice, uh, this uh, steel science or material science tetrahedron does not exist, does not apply, uh, because there are other things that impact materials. Hmm? So, um, and, and hopefully you'll get a feeling for that also uh, in the course of the lectures, over the lectures. So you, ha in, you have steel science or material science and technology, and, and your tetrahedron becomes an octahedron. Why does it become an octahedron? Because there are two other elements that play a role in uh, selection of materials and application of materials. One of them is cost, yes? Um, if I, if, um, if we would, this class, we would get together and the challenge would be to build um, a new car from scratch. We would probably end up um, with um, a lot of um, very interesting technology. One of the things we would probably do is we, we would build car, the body, uh, with, uh, with using aluminum. Yes? It would be... Um, it would be the best way for us to work. It would be the, uh, the cheapest way to, uh, to work. It would be the most flexible one, yes? Um, and um, we would also have a very nice light uh, car body, yes? That's what, how we would do it. Um, so, um, so, why, uh, so why don't we uh, build cars out of aluminum uh, today? Well, because once you start making mass production, of cars. Uh, and what is mass production? Mass production is m more than 300,000 cars a year. So if the same group of people, us, would be asked to design a car, but we would need to make not one, yes, but we would need to make 300,000 every year, uh, high quality vehicles at affordable prices, yes, we would make a steel car. We'd make a steel car because that, that would be the cheapest way to get it, to make a car. But there are other elements that play a role. There's also regulations, yes? Um, you can make whatever you want, yes? But um, if um, there are some regulations that control uh, the product that you manufacture, and there are many regulations, yes? Uh, perhaps some of you have already bought a car one day or uh, uh, you can buy this car because it satisfies regulations yes you cannot build any car and put it on the road you cannot build any plane and you know fly it up in the air there are regulations that govern many things in the life of an engineer you cannot build any building if it doesn't uh, if, if you, there are building codes out there, you know, and, uh, and you have to respect them, yes? So regulations also have a huge impact on materials, yes? And you can see if you visit other countries where the regulations are very weak, you can see things that will shock you, yes? Like people that use uh, bamboo constructions, uh, you know, when they build high-rise high buildings. You can see it's like it's not normal because you know it's unsafe, yes? It works very well. There's no problem. They built uh, uh, buildings using bamboo scaffolding everywhere in China, yes? But you can see 
there's something wrong about this because it's unsafe. Yes. So if we would just use that, to, uh, if we just look at the tetrahedron, you say there's nothing wrong with bamboo. Yes. But regulations tell us it's unsafe. So in certain countries, you're not, you, you're in Korea, you cannot build scaffoldings with bamboo. Yes. Because the regulations tell you you cannot. So the same thing will ha is uh, happening with, for instance, cars. Yes. If the regulations tell you um, you have to have this type of mileage. Your car has to drive 50 kilometers for every liter. Or your CO2 emissions have to be less than 100 grams per kilometer. Yes? And your steel car is too heavy to achieve this, then your material selection will force you to use other materials. Okay? So cost regulations also have impact on the, uh, the material selection and uh, do have an impact on um, uh, the design of certain steels, yes? Okay, right, so um, for uh, the uh, first lectures we'll, we'll just talk about some fundamental concept that we have to repeat because you know, we, I, I, I need to make sure that everybody knows the uh, simple things like the iron carbon phase diagram, um, things like this. So, so to make sure we all have the same understanding of the relationship between microstructures and properties in steels, and how microstructure is controlled by thermal cycles and mechanical cycles. And what is very important in steel is what we call the decomposition of austenite, because that has the transformations in steels uh, are constantly, are always used to generate specific microstructure. Hmm? Um, all right. Okay. So just, um, again, a few words about uh, usage of steels. Um, steels are, steel is being produced in uh, huge quantities, yes. Uh, the production is... Uh, close to 1.6 billion tons of steels every year. It's a material that's very closely connected to uh, growth in economy and society, yes. Um, you can, uh, one of the ways in which um, you can uh, gauge the wealth of a nation is by looking at how much tons of steel are used per inhabitant in that country. If that is high, that is an advanced, usually an advanced um, uh, economy. Um, cars, yes, we see cars on the roads everywhere. Um, is an important, is that an important factor of these 1.6 billion tons of steel? We produce um, 70 today, 70 million, so 70 with six zero vehicles every year, yes? And every year we produce 2.5 million cars more than the year before. You can see this uh, almost linear increase, yes? And this is uh, certainly going to continue until um, 2020, where we'll go close to 100 million vehicles per year, yes? Um, so, and this is, on, this is a basically 99% of the cars um, are made out of steel, whatever you're being told about aluminum vehicles and magnesium and plastics, 99% uh, of the vehicles um, are steel-based. Uh, and this is on, only represents um, about 5% of the usage of this, this huge amount of steel, yes? Okay. When we talk about steels, also important, we talk in this course about carbon steels, yes? So these are very, very low alloyed steels. They make out the bulk of 
the steel production, hmm? over 95%. Yes? Um, there's another um, steel industry, parallel steel industry, which is the stainless steel industry, which also uh, uh, contains the special steels industry. That's about less than 5% of the, uh, the steel production yearly. So our course will focus on this, these products. Yes? The stainless, for the stainless steels, there is a separate course uh, that is taught at GIFT, uh, which you can register for regularly. Okay.